So let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Um, it is just a hair before two o'clock. And this is Nick McPhee with the Unhindered by Coding live stream. Um, I think this is working. Um, having problems today, there was a new update. Oh, yeah, uh, but uh, dee -ba -dee -ba -dee. Um, there was an update to the Twitch Studio software this morning, and it uh, kind of blew things up on my end uh, when it auto installed. In particular, uh, I can't see anything. And so that's kind of awkward, as one can imagine, but it looks like we're streaming, so fingers crossed, life is good, and we will move on. Um, but I can't see myself, so if something's not visible on your end, definitely let me know, and I will try to deal with it as best I can. And hopefully by the next time I stream, I will have figured out why this is happening and how to make it not happen. Um, I'm sort of thinking uninstall and reinstall might be a thing to do. Don't know, but we'll see. Um, so today we're returning to the segmented file system client thing. What I think we'll finish today, fingers crossed, because I don't think there's that much left to do. Um, uh, I've got, I want to talk about property-based tests some because I added some of those um, uh, as part of just adding some tests. Um, offline and uh, found a subtle bug, which is kind of cool. Um, and fixed a subtle bug. And um, if there's time, we might um, play with Anyhow as a error management tool, um, which I haven't tried um, and was suggested. If not, I don't think it was last time. I think it was maybe the session before on this. Um, by someone, maybe a Zitsu, but I don't remember for sure. Might have been Wagafa. Um, so uh, we might look at the Anyhow crate and uh, see if what we can do to modify slash improve our air handling um, with that. So uh, with no, all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. And again, if something's not visible properly, uh, font sizes are wrong, um, I'm using my hands and they don't seem to be in the screen because I can't tell where my hands are, uh, let me know. Uh, hop in the chat and uh, let me know what's going on. But let's see if we can make this thing happen. Let's start with the question about the... Um, oh, actually, I meant to... Let me just... Oh, ah, let me kill that. There we go. Um, let's start with the um, uh, quick check test. So if people are not familiar with property-based testing, um, uh, it was, I think it started with a tool called quick check in the Haskell universe, but there are now property-based testing libraries available in most languages. Um, uh, so, um, if Rust isn't your thing, there are plenty of other, there are libraries for plenty of other languages, including whatever you're probably using. Um, so, uh, in the file, uh, and actually maybe it's worth reminding us quickly <coughs> what the project is. <coughs> so we're receiving packets, two kinds of packets. So we connect to a UDP server, <coughs> excuse me, that server then throws a ton of packets back at us. Um, and we uh, receive those packets. They uh, might be in any order. Um, in fact, the server deliberately randomizes the order of the packets. Um, and we have to receive these packets organize them and write out the contents to files. So what's happening is the server is sending us three files. We have, and it's actually cooked in that it's three files. Um, that's a thing that in a perfect world I would change about this project. Um, but uh, for now, we're gonna leave that alone. Uh, you receive three files. 
but they're it's like receiving you receive a bag of puzzle pieces and you know that they can be organized into three puzzles but you need to do all that work and there are two kinds of packets there are header packets that have um, a file ID and a file name so they tell you what file what's the name of the file that you're writing uh, gonna write to when the time comes and then data packets have a file ID a packet number so it's a um, you can think of the file ID as telling you which of the puzzles it's part of the packet number is a unique identifier for that piece in that puzzle um, and then the data uh, there and so we've written code that receives and parses these successfully and what's left um, just to be clear about where we're headed today is to implement this um, so we currently um, do all the things we need to do with packets except for write out to the files so we've got a loop here while the file manager has not yet received all the packets we grab another packet um, we parse it into a packet type um, and then we pass that to the file manager to process that packet so we the file manager just gets this stream of packets and it organizes them into the three sets and it will make sure they're in order um, and so we can ask the file manager questions like, have we found all of them yet? Um, and when we're done, we will uh, write them all out. And this is the thing that isn't yet implemented. Um, so if we go over to file manager, that's currently is a to do so that that doesn't actually work. Um, that's the one piece of this that doesn't yet function. Um, and so, uh, if we move this over here, um, make that a little smaller so that we can get it in the screen. There we go. Uh, so the server's running, and oops. If we um, back out and cargo run we will get oh we have to recompile the world <coughs> um or at least bits of the world um so we get we get a lot of packets and this does eventually terminate um which tells us that um our um received all packets is doing the right thing we are actually getting all the packets um and this is boring, so I'm going to kill that. Watching it just receive a bazillion packets is very uninteresting. Um, but uh, so this is what we have to implement today. But before we get there, I wanted to have some testing in place. And so um, I had some just basic uh, testing tests that if we process just a header packet, it does the right thing process that if we have just a data packet that isn't the last packet it does the right thing process a data packet that is the last packet it does the right thing okay that was fine but i didn't feel like that was necessarily a particularly comprehensive set of tests um there's a lot to, the packets are fairly complicated uh, <clears throat> and there seem to be a, a number of ways that um, I might not have, a number of edge cases I might not have caught. So I decided that that it would be interesting to look at the quick check library. Um, and so this is uh, this guy right here. So the burnt sushi quick check library um, lets us do property based testing. And so I added that and it was actually fairly straightforward um, and worked quite well. So um, uh, uh, basically, the way I did it is uh, there are several different ways you can do this, but I implemented properties, which are basically functions that return booleans. Um, so this is saying that if I have a header packet, it's gonna this header doesn't crash. Um, I get a header packet. 
and I return a Boolean. And the Boolean is essentially saying, did things go okay for this header packet? Um, and uh, since all I'm checking at the moment is that things didn't crash, um, I construct an empty file manager um, and I ask it to process this packet we just received. Um, and I return true. And if any of the, either of these lines panic, then this test will fail. Otherwise this test will succeed. And similarly, I've got the data packets don't crash in the same way. Um, uh, and then I've also got some tests that headers should set the name correctly. So um, given a header packet, we're gonna create a file manager. We're going to assert that the, um, that the file manager has never seen the file ID associated with this packet because it's a brand new header manager or file manager, so it shouldn't have seen any um, uh, file IDs yet. And then we tell it to process this packet. And then we assert that it has seen that file ID so that we say get, um, so this unwrap would fail if it had not seen that file ID yet. And we assert that the number of packets associated with that file is zero because this is a header packet. So there won't be any data packets associated with that file. So the file will be there, but if we ask it for the packets associated with it, we're going to get nothing, uh, an empty vector back. And then we assert that the file name that we have, that the file manager has associated with that file ID is the file name that was in that packet so that we've um, correctly assigned that file name um, based on that packet. And then there's something similar with data packets where we assume we check things about last packets, blah, blah, blah. Um, so some simple tests. Um, and then I also wrote a non quick check test that just puts a whole um, a full packet set for a file, the header and all the data packets um, and processes them and verifies that all the right stuff is there at the end. Um, but coming back to the quick check, because this is the interesting part, um, I think, what quick check does here, all I didn't specify a test. I really just specified a property, a property that a header packet ought to have. And what quick, quick check does is it will generate random inputs, in this case, random header packets, here, random data packets, here, random header packets, here, random data packets. So it will generate random packets and check that the property holds for a bunch of randomly generated packets um, and or randomly generated inputs. And I think the default is 100 inputs. Um, and so it generates a bunch of random inputs and then it checks to see you know, does the property hold for all of them? And if it does, then it says this test pass passes. But if any of them fail, then it says, oh, this test fails. And it attempts to simplify the um, input for you uh, so that you have a, an easier time deciding what the error is. Now for this to work, I had to over in packets rs where was um arbitrary there it is um it was right at the bottom i had to implement arbitrary the arbitrary trait for both header and data basically telling the system how to build arbitrary instances of those packets um, and that was pretty straightforward a header packet was an arbitrary u8 and an arbitrary string and a data packet was an arbitrary U8, an arbitrary U16, an arbitrary Boolean, and an arbitrary VEC of data. Um, and so that I had to add that, and then these tests will run. So I can run um, quick check on these and get um, hopefully useful stuff. Um, so I could say things like cargo test and lo and behold, the test fails. Um, 
And this didn't simplify very much. And I think maybe I'm, I need to do something similar to what I did with arbitrary to tell it how to simplify the components of packets. Um, because it doesn't, like I would have expected this data vector to have been simplified down to probably the empty, not, well, it can't be the empty vector because you have to have the first few components, but it could have been a lot shorter than this. Um, uh, but if we run it multiple times, uh, one thing we'll notice is the packet number always seems to be 65535. Which it, yeah. Um, everything else changes, but that packet number is always the same. And the error that we get is attempt to add with overflow. Um, and uh, the... Uh, and we get it, in this case, we get it in two places, the data add vec property failed and the data doesn't crash failed. Both cases, the um, packet number is 65535. Um, and in both cases, the error is attempted to add with overflow. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's go have a look and see what might have caused that. Uh, so it turns out... I feel like, uh, oh, I think that if you do Rust backtrace equals one, you can get a backtrace out of these that provided a little more useful information. But I was able to just um, do some poking around earlier. And the problem is in, no, it's in packet group, um, right here. Um, so if I look at the error where it says, um, attempt to add with overflow, there really was only one place where I was ever doing any addition. There's really not a lot of plus happening in this project, at least not explicitly. And that was right here in process data packet. We insert the data packet into the set of packets. Um, uh, and the key is going to be the packet number and the data is going to be the data associated with that packet. So we add that data um, to the packet group. And then we check to see, is this the last packet? Um, and if it is, we want to set the expected number of packets to be one more than the packet number. So because we're counting at zero, if the if packet four is the last packet, we have a total of five packets, zero through four, zero, one, two, three, four. Um, so I need to add one to the packet number. And this is what I've had, is data packet number plus one as U size. Now I needed the as U size because um, the packet numbers are U16s because, uh, packet numbers are represented in our um, uh, setup as two byte values. So we know that a packet number ought to fit in a U16 because we're only using two bytes of the packet to represent the packet number. Um, and so packet numbers uh, over in packet, let's see, where's data? Um, data, 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 that's header, there's data. So packet number is specified to be a U16 here. Um, and so uh, we add one to that and then convert that to a U size because expected number of packets is specified to be a U size. Um, and uh, that could have been um, something more constrained perhaps, um, but uh, I wanted to be able to talk about that in terms of the length of vectors. Uh, it made more sense just to have it be U size. Um, and this is where the error was. This is the cool part. Um, it turns out that a U16 plus one isn't always a U16. Um, and you can overflow. So if you have the largest possible 16-bit number, which happens to be 65535, and you add one to it, 
you wrap around and that's not cool. And so this can blow up if the um, uh, value of packet number happens to be the largest possible 16-bit value, which I almost certainly wouldn't have written a test for. In some sense, I should have. Like, you should always write tests for edge cases, but I don't know that it would have occurred to me necessarily that that was an edge case I needed to write a test for. Um, and I'm not sure I would have thought about it in this way. Um, and so that causes the test to fail. Um, and we can solve the problem by switching here to this version where we first convert the U16 to a U size and then add one. And since a U16 is considerably smaller than a U size, the maximum U size, adding one to it should always be okay. And so if we um, come back and rerun our tests, uh, recompile, our tests should all pass. And they do. Life is good. So that actually found a bug uh, and um, helped me figure out how to fix that bug. And that was pretty cool. I was really happy about that. Um, so we're gonna declare that a finished thing um, and move on to actually trying to wrap this puppy up. Um, let's see, am I? Yeah, I'm good there, okay. So uh, I'm a big fan, property tests for the win. And I think they help, helped me catch a bug that I probably would not have caught otherwise. And that's nifty. Okay, so what do we have to do? we have to implement um, write all files. So we need a function that writes all the files out to disk. And I could try to test this. It gets a little complicated because I'm writing to disk. So I'd have to actually make sure the files aren't there. And then after we're done, the files are there and that they match the target files. I'm not going to get into that at the moment. I think that sounds a little weedy. Um, and there are probably other things we'd rather do. So I think we'll just run it and test it kind of by hand by checking the file system um, uh, has the appropriate files on it. So we need to write all the files. Um, so we have this map of packet groups and a packet group has the file name, right? Let us check that. Yes. So actually I think the file manager probably just wants to ask the pack each element in the packet group to uh, write itself out. So I think we can say um, map dot value of self dot map uh, dot map dot values dot um see do i want to do it this way or do i want to do a for loop i could do a for each that'll work um and so for each, uh, oops, oh, come on. Uh, so we're going to have uh, packet group, ah, loop. Um, and so we're going to want that packet group to write file. And that should do the right. Th oh, and I guess we need to re return a OK um, Yeah, so we need to re return an OK when we're done. Um, and the, oh, I need a, I need a semicolon here. Now. Uh, oh, and I need to actually pass in the unit type, don't I? I forget to do that. Okay. So now that works. This is failing because that just doesn't exist. 
So we need to go over to um, packet group and implement a write file method. Um, so packet group fun write file is going to take, I don't know that we need mutability. I think we can just take a reference to self. Um, and that's going to return nothing. Um, and we'll put it to do bang and, uh, oh, I need to make it pub because that is being called outside. Okay. So there we go. That sets that up. Um, now to write the file out. So a packet group, we know the name of the file and we should have the set of packets and we should be able to order them because we have the keys by packet number. And so we should just be able to go from zero to expected number of packets and write get packet n out of this map and then write the data part of that packet out to this file. So I think this should be too bad. So we're going to need to first open the file. I've never done this before in Rust. Let us go find out Rust. Open file. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we create the file and we write stuff out. This seems like a pretty straightforward deal. Okay. Um, and this is all in STD, so I don't think I need any crates. I think I can just do let mute file equal create. Let's just do that. Uh, yeah. Boom. And instead of foo.txt here, we should have um, self.file name. And that we don't know what a file is, so we need to import that. And this uh, oh, it's, this is an option. Yeah, because we may not have gotten the string yet um, at the beginning. But by the time this is called, we should definitely have the file name. So we should be good. Um, now here we have a problem in that um, this wants to return a result type uh, and we don't have any type here and we probably want one. Um, so uh, we probably want an IO type. Uh, uh, so let's see if we back up to here. Yeah, this returns IO result. We probably want to return that, I think. Um, and we'll need to import that. And why are you grumpy? Aha, uh -huh, because we're taking ownership of that. Now, do I want the as ref here? I think I want it after the unwrap, right? Or not. Okay. That seemed to take care of that problem. Um, and so that'll make file manager break. Oh. Actually, really? Um, oh, because this just gets ignored. Um, so we probably want... Yeah, we want to look at that result um because we want to handle that error and if we we want that error to just propagate up so why did this not work um oh because this closure 
returns nothing. Huh. So maybe not sure we can make this closure return an error type. Um, and it says it's more idiomatic to use a for loop. So let's actually just change this to a for loop because then we'll be able to do the return. So for packet group in self.map.values do boom and then this goes here and that goes away and now that question mark works so that checks if there is an error here we will pass it on out um, otherwise because it's a unit type um, the value would always be the unit type. We don't care about that, so we can ignore that. Okay, that's cool. Um, and cool. So we have created the file. And now for every packet in packets, we are going to need to write. So it sounds to me like that's also a for packet in um, uh, self dot packets. Hmm. Actually, I probably want. Oh, actually, I really I want to actually have packet number in the range zero dot dot self dot expected number of packets boom ba so that's going to give me um and we're going to iterate over this set of packet numbers and then for each packet number we'll get the packet packets dot get packet number dot unwrap oh actually i probably just want dot question mark but that's gonna be the wrong kind of type so actually we'll do unwrap for now next we'll do expect that'll be a little better um uh didn't find an expected packet and then if we come to using anyhow to do some better um, air handling we can deal with that uh, in a little bit uh, so we expected a reference to a u16 but found an integer okay so we probably need so I think I can just do this no Oh, and then I need to put a reference in front of, oops, I think I need my paren there. Okay, now that's not awesome, but the packet number really should be um, the, oh, actually, this is also broken. I just realized this is We've got another option, and so maybe we'll unwrap that. Um, and now I wonder if that changes any of this. I don't think it does, because I think we'll still have packet number will be the wrong, oh, no, sorry, the wrong type. Uh, Expected a U16, found a U size. Um, and if we just make that a reference, we're still going to be broken, right? 
Yeah, so we're going to have to actually turn that packet number into a U size. We could tr try a. Ooh, hello? Oh, it's the other way around as U16. So this, this is a little dodgy because this conversion could fail. Um, and so it might be better to do a try from, um, hey, C Films, I'm sorry that you're not doing 100%. Um, I hope that uh, whatever is ailing you gets better because that doesn't sound like fun. I'm doing quite well, which I realize doesn't make you feel any better at all. Um, it's a sunny Saturday. Had kind of a disaster of a first stream this morning. Um, all kinds of things didn't work, um, and I'm still baffled by what's going on there. Oh, that's too bad. Um, I, clearly something happening. I had um, Izitsu was sick a week ago, um, so I hope you get better soon. Um, cause being sick is not fun. And there's a lot of that going on, um, in the world. So best of wishes. Um, so this could fail. So I actually, I think I prefer, let's do, uh, try, let's say that this is going to be a U16 and we'll say try from uh, packet number. And we'll say expect um, the packet number should fit in a U16. That's a terrible message. Um, but if we get to um, get to uh, the anyhow stuff, we'll probably try to fix some of this stuff up. Oh, couldn't find try from. Really? Meh? Do I need to say U16 colon colon try from? Yes, I do. Um, so this project doesn't use any web stuff at all. The, uh, the ICE repos project doesn't have any JavaScript in it, but it is using WebAssembly. So we are compiling. So this is the ICE repos project that I work on Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings, it compiles to WebAssembly. So we're using the UYEW framework um, and all of that Rust then compiles to WebAssembly and runs in the browser. And that's been really quite cool. I've been very, very happy with that. Um, uh, I may, you know, I'm having fits here now trying to get OAuth and, um, Cloudflare workers and things to all talk to each other, but I, I don't think none of that is a WebAssembly issue. That's just a Nick can't figure out how to like make stuff work issue. Um, so uh, we're gonna see if we can do better. Um, uh, but this project they're working on now in this session, it doesn't have anything to do with um, uh, web stuff uh, or WebAssembly. So. Um, we don't have any issues there. Um, so, um, okay, so we get the packet number. Um, so we try to convert it from a, uh, a U size to a U16. And if that succeeds, we'll go ahead and assign it to a U16. If it fails, we'll spit out a message in panic. Um, now I can use just packet number here um, and packet number. Um, and so we'll look up um, this in the packet map and we'll expect that that actually, we found it. Um, I should say expected packet. Um, 
and then we'll get a reference to a vector of u8. Um, oh, yeah. I should fix that. I'm not sure what to fix, though. I mean, it's awkward because I'm working on three different projects. Um, and I don't, which I think that's sort of what I probably shouldn't be doing in Twitch land. I should probably just be picking a project and working on it. But I was like, I got all these projects I want to work on. Um, and so, yeah, it may say that I'm working on, yeah, it does even, I can see that. Um, and I, that's not what I'm working on now. So that's the, what, what that's describing is the ice repos project that is Tuesday morning from 10 to noon and Saturday morning from 10 to noon. And this is the afternoon Saturday project, which has nothing to do with the web stuff. So I apologize for the confusion. Um, Thank you for pointing that out. And I will definitely have to try to figure out how to fix that. I thought that the schedule had the right thing, but I think you can only have one kind of description-y thing. Um, so I guess I'd have to edit this every time, but I could do it now. Um, uh, yeah. Um, So I don't know. So live programming currently building. Okay, so that's this thing here. Um, uh, actually, you know, I'm not going to mess with this because this is probably the last um, session on this project. So taking the time to like put a thing for this project there now that we're like halfway into the stream is probably not helpful. This is a terminal application, yes. Um, so it runs, um, this won't work at the moment because we're in the middle of stuff. But if I do cargo run here, this will run here in the terminal. Um, and it will download these packets um, from a server and assemble them into files. And when we finish this part, it will actually write the files out to the disk and then we will be done with this part of the project. Um, so this this is using the network in that we are getting UDP packets. So we're making a socket connection um, to the server and we're downloading packets uh, and writing them to disk, but there's no web stuff in it. It's all sort of backend kind of architecture stuff. Um, so which has been actually a really good fit for Rust. Um, this has worked very nicely. I suspect this would also be an interesting project to do in Go, um, uh, but that's a problem for another day that I will very possibly never look into. Okay, so I think this, oh, we're over here, packet group, yeah. So now we've got the packet, zippity doo -da. And now we have to write the packet to that file. Um, so that was file.writeall. Okay, we can do that. File.writeall. Um, there we go. And that takes a vector of uh, an array of U8s uh, slice of U8, so we ought to be able to hand it our vector, and life should be good. Um, right. Um, so I have not, I did PHP some 20 years ago. I haven't really done anything with it in a long time. I've done a fair bit of JavaScript and TypeScript in Angular. Um, um, and I've done MySQL and um, some other databases at various times. So, um, so yeah, this is what we're doing right now isn't really all that connected to that, um, but the morning stream, um, so next Tuesdays and Saturday morning stream will be more like that. Um, so, um, 
So this, in theory, writes everything out. Why is it giving me a result may be unused? Ah, so again, we write all can return an error. And so we need to question mark that. So we check, I mean, we're not checking very well. And, and that may be a good thing for us to come back to. Um, and then I think that we would write everything out and it doesn't look like I have to close the file. Um, the file must close itself. Um, yeah, we don't even have an explicit close. Um, files are automatically closed when they go out of scope. Um, okay, I'm down with that. Um, yeah, so Python's a good choice for that um, terminal application and stuff. I've done scripting in Python, essentially terminal application things in Python. We have some of our lab admin stuff is done in Python that way. Um, so that's been a good tool for us in, oops, that, in that context. Um, so, whoa, why are we all red? Um, oh, I needed to return an okay. I always forget to do that part. And now I think we're good there. And uh, so in theory, I think this might work. I have never used Cython. I don't know what Cython is. Um, wah, 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 Cython. I assume it's, oh, C extensions for Python. Yeah. No, I've never done that. Um, I've never done a lot of Python and I've never really done anything that needed to be performant, particularly. Um, I have colleagues that have written, um, I think kind of the opposite of this, um, where Python's calling uh, C code, um, but I think not using Cython um, uh, for performance reasons, but it's not something I've ever done. Um, so, in theory, so we don't have any files here now. If we run, are we going to get something? Great question. Um, oh yeah, so we're still printing out this. We should get, we should remove those print statements, but this will prove to us that something's happening. Do, 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 um, it takes a while to get all the packets, um, and, uh, I think it's still getting packets. I think that they're just all of length 1028, so we're not seeing anything. Um, oh, there we go. There was a change. Um, do, 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 do. And it said it finished and it terminated successfully. Hey, and there are files. Yeah, a single string of pointless text for testing. That is correct. And as you like it is the full text of the play by Shakespeare. And binary.jpg um, is a photograph. Uh, and that is this guy right here. So that did, in fact, successfully download all three files and reconstruct them. And that, I think, is it. Like, I think it works. And if we were paranoid, we could diff, as you like it, against Java um, test files, as you like it. And those match and diff binary to 
Java server test files binary and those match and diff small with Java test file small and that matches too, which is not super surprising. So we can remove all those guys and uh, let's get rid of those print statements that weren't being very useful. Um, uh, if we get, I'm gonna just for now comment that out. Um, and I'm actually gonna, uh, 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 time that, um, and I suspect we want to do something like print, oh, but yeah, we may want to like print dots or something um, because otherwise I think the user has no idea if anything's happening here. I mean, it's, you can't really tell the difference between nothing and something uh, at this point. Um, what would really probably make sense is to figure out how to do like command line updating uh, output. Um, there we go. Cause that took 45 seconds, which is a pretty long time to have no information about what's going on. So I don't think we want that. Um, so let's, Let's just have it print um, a dot for every packet. Um, and that will at least give us some kind of feedback that things are happening or not. Oh man, it must be doing some kind of IO buffering. And so all those dots are being stuck in a buffer and not being printed out. Uh, that is not super helpful, uh, like not helpful at all. So we're gonna get some huge pile of dots at the very end, I bet. And without putting some kind of print line in every now and then, it's just not going to print anything out, which is not. So uh, there must be like a, a standard IO flush that would be useful here. Rust flush standard out print uh, flush. Um, so I may need to do IO did it out flush. Okay. Let's try that. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And we're probably uh, going to have to implement in, in, in import something. Yeah. Oh, flush not found. Uh, oh, we have to have a use for standard IO, right. Okay. And now it's yellow squiggly. Why is it yellow squiggly? Because it could fail. So we need to put a question mark at the end of it. Wow. Okay. That was a lot of faffing about. Um, and now let's try it again. And see if we get dots. There we go. That's better. So now we get some kind of live feedback that something's happening. And we could fancy that up. Um, 
in various ways, but I think I'm not going to worry about it right now. And I think I'd rather spend the next time on the air handling, but could come back to trying to make sort of a nicer um, user interface here for that output information. Um, make a note about that. Um, the user experience isn't great. Let's just check to make sure that we got our things. We did. Yeah. Boop. Um, boop. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Um, great. While you're downloading, it would be cool to um, use. Um, what's the library? Um, let you. Uh, do like fancy text output um, curses um, curses style output um, to provide uh, more useful info on the progress for example info on what percentage of each file has been downloaded. So then you'd have some idea what was um, uh, happening. Um, wah -wah. Improve the user experience with curses. Okay. So I think that's nifty. And I think we're going to commit that. So what have we done? We uh, changed write all files to loop over the packet groups. Um, oh, we fiddled with the user interface and we added um, a write file method to uh, the packet group. Okay, so let's commit all that. Um, so let's do that one last. Let's do this. Um, bah, bah, bah. Uh, implement file manager. Write all files. This just loops over the packet groups and asks each one to write that file. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. And then packet group. Um, we um, uh, uh, oh, that's why that's not right. Okay. Add right. Let's see, we'll say packet group right file this opens the file for writing and then loops over all the packet numbers getting each associated packet and writing it to the file and actually one of the nifty things that I didn't actually say explicitly but is worth noting packet group by putting the packets in a map that maps from their packet number to the data even though the packets come in in totally random order um the uh we don't need to sort them because we just will loop over the packet numbers in order and get the right packet out of the map for each index and that will effectively sort them without us having ever had to do anything explicit about that um, and the fast 
access time that we get from that hash map and knowing how many what the range of legal packet numbers is sort of gives us a, a, an efficient uh, way of getting the packets in the right order. And that's actually pretty cool. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and then main, we will... Um, uh, say that we updated um, uh, we could say we improved not by much the UI when running the program this removed the got packet statements which weren't really very helpful um, and replaced them with single dots every time a packet was loaded. But, um, okay. So that all takes care of that. I think that's nifty and swell. Um, now, what? So we have an hour left, almost exactly. And I think I do want to do stuff with the um, air handling. I think the air handling is a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, there's a lot of like expects and unwraps that probably don't need to, don't want to be there. Um, and uh, I think that we can improve on that situation. Um, in fact, I think if we um, add, uh, what is that? So um, add uh, pedantic clippy warnings. Um, which of these? Well, actually, I wonder if this would be how to configure Clippy to be as annoying as possible. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think I've been doing pedantic and nursery. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I've been doing pedantic and nursery. Um, And so I click, let's grab the whole thing. And if I put that here at the top, um, now I think that's going to make all kinds of clipping warnings come up, right? Because nothing else I would have expected. Um, Rust cargo clippy. Um, yeah, so that made a bunch of stuff happen. If we comment that out, I think we'll see that we don't have nearly so much, if any. Yeah, okay, so there's none there. So if we do all of this, I don't know that we want all of that, to be honest with you. Um, hmm. So I think I don't want restriction. And I don't know what cargo does, actually. Um, uh, oh, I think I'm going to make cargo go away too for now. And I think we'll just do Clippy all pedantic and nursery. And now Clippy will be, um, a whole lot of fussy. Yeah. So, in fact, 
to make this easier to work with, I'm actually come over here. Let's do bacon and run Clippy. And then we can um, work our way through them um, and see which things we actually want to deal with. Um, so, uh, is header could be a const fn packets line 18. Bah, bah, bah. So, that doesn't ever change for different packets. It has no dependency on the packets, the particular packet. So it could be a const fn, that makes sense. That's easy to change. Um, file ID, we could add the must use on that. That makes sense. Packets, file ID. So the must use, um, is basically a warning saying if you call file ID, you really need to use the result. Otherwise, there was no point in calling it because it has no side effects. It's purely functional. Um, and so that's kind of useful. Um, and then it could also be a const fn. Really? Why is that? Because that does depend on self. Huh. I'm not sure. I really understand what that's telling me. So let's go to the internet and ask it. Um, uh, Const functions are still being worked on with some features only being available. Um, so uh, why is mine constant? File ID. I don't see, I don't see that that's constant. I'm really, be actually a little confused on that. Um, Rust constant function. Okay, I get constants. The other main use of the const keyword is const fn. This marks a function as being callable in the body of a const or static item and in array initializers. Um, uh, so it claims that it could be evaluated at compile time, but I don't see that that's true. I think file ID can't be compiled Huh, I don't know. Let's put it in. Let's see what happens. We do that. Um, oops. Uh, let's come back here and then here. So it made that go away. Now if we rerun the test, the test still will pass? Yes. Hmm. And if we rerun cargo run Let's see do we have the yeah cargo run i'm just curious if this actually works do, 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 do. and i think that the slowness here is actually about the speed of the server not the speed of the client that we've written i think the server deliberately um, sends the packets with little gaps between them uh, so that we don't uh, lose packets since UDP doesn't actually check for lost packets and do resending um, 
uh, this um, there's the risk of losing packets and so this is being a little slow to sort of reduce that likelihood so I think it worked okay um, I don't know that I understand that but um, it seemed to be happy uh, okay so it wanted to use self here on line 28 no, no, go here. 28. Uh, so this would be self header and self header, self data. That makes sense. Um, try to use self whenever possible. And then 38, we have the same thing. So this would be self is header. This would be self. This is self. So all of those change. Um, and then we have something similar on line 53 where this can be self and this can be self. Um, and something similar again on 79 so this could be self because um, we're impling on header and then same thing happens on line 112 uh, that we're impling on data so that can be self um, and that takes care of all of the packets ones so now we're into file manager and it has its own fun and we're, we only have eight warnings so we don't have that many more um so received all packets ought to have a must use line 13 of file manager file manager line 13 so must use so this just returns a functional value and doesn't modify anything. So if we don't use it, uh, it doesn't amount to anything. Um, oops. Uh, and then, ah, so here we have a closure that calls a function um, and we could just specify the name of the function and skip the whole closure business. So that's actually clever. I don't think I would have thought of that. Um, and that's on line 19. Oh, it's right here. So we could replace this since we're just calling this function with no arguments on that thing. We can say, um, we're, uh, oh, we have to have all of that. Really? Um, so. Oh yeah, we have to we have to specify which one we mean. So packet group, packet group received all packets. Hmm. Do I think that's more or less readable? That's an interesting question. Um, whoa, go away, go away, go away. Um, I think it's complaining. That's what I think. So we probably have to import create packet group. And now it's happy. And so actually we probably could have imported um, well we've got packet group here so we could I think we can get rid of this because we're using that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now we don't need self. Yeah. Cause we're never actually referring to packet group, um, on its own anymore. Okay. And that I do think is a win. I think saying packet group received all packets is better probably. So I like that. I'm good with that. 
and then um, uh, let's see line 31 what is it fussing about docs for function returning result missing error section oh I haven't actually gotten into doc stuff um, uh, so what does that look like I don't even know what the um, oh stop it hi cat uh, our cat is snuffling around looking for um, somebody to be his friend hello kitty cat um, so boop Oh, so we just have an errors section at the top. We can do that. And this is on write all files. Kitty cat, I'm on the internet at the moment. You're going to have to like just suck it up, bud. Um, so this will return an error if wet. So this can return an error if there was a problem writing the file. Um, if there is a problem writing any of the uh, downloaded files, we oops could make that more specific, but that'll do for now. And then, oh, I've got an async here, and there are no await statements. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I could make the packet group write file async. Uh, and then, but I don't really need to. Um, I mean, I guess if I made them async I could uh, let them happen in parallel, but I don't know that I care enough to mess with that right now. So um, I'm going to just take that async out. Um, and oops, now we have a problem houston and that's in maine so maine oh maine's got an await that it doesn't need anymore because we made file write all files not async okay uh so that takes care of that we're down to four warnings um, we've got a must use on received all packets line 13 yeah so we should say must use there and uh, 35 it doesn't like my semicolons uh, oh this doesn't return anything and so really I want a semicolon um, uh, because I'm not returning a value and then write file can panic um, uh, so that's actually like this but with missing pan Docs panics docs, and that's the form that takes. Wah, wah, wah. Boom, boom. Well, panic if so, it panics under a lot of circumstances. Um, many of which are not feasible, but if the file can't be written. I'm gonna just say that for now, that's not great, um, but if we change the error handling, uh, some of this stuff is gonna change anyway. 
And then uh, packet group line 42. Oh, we also need to have an errors section. Um, uh, we'll return an error if the file can't be written. So actually it's really that the file, see what, what panics and what returns an error. So write all returns an error. Um, these, so this, um, the unwrap would panic, the question mark would return an error, and the unwrap shouldn't ever happen. Um, and because there ought to be a file name. If it does happen, we probably do want it to crash. Um, if we don't have an expected number of packets yet, that's also a programming error. So that will panic and that's probably right. So, okay, so we'll panic if, um, the file name hasn't been set. Um, the expected number of packets have, hasn't been set. If any of the following is true. Um, so that would fail um, if we can't there's a missing packet in the packets map uh, and then this expect here happens oh no that's this one that's the one I just documented this one is if we can't convert. So I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, oh, well, I guess it could if the expected number of packets was just set wrong. Um, so a packet number was too big to fit in a U16, i.e. the expected number of packets was too large. So that would be a source of a panic. And the errors will only happen when there's a question mark. And that would happen if we failed to create the, open the file if either we couldn't open the file um, uh, there was an error writing to the file and that could happen through permissions or any of a number of other issues okay that was a lot of faffing about but clippy's happy now uh, i think we have improved the code in some ways so this is all clippy warning stuff um uh yeah so stage all changes turned on additional, turned on and dealt with additional clippy, whoa, warnings. Um, we'll just, boom. Okay. So I think that's a thing. Now we got only have half an hour left. That clippy business took forever. Uh, apologies if that was a little on the dull side. Um, but I do love refactoring. It makes me so happy, especially when we've got good tests. Um, and I'm just checking, yeah, my tests all fit pass. Um, so 
So if we come over here, we could be like, yes, test still pass. Good job. Um, so we got half an hour. Let's actually um, consider trying to do something with the anywho, anyhow, I keep saying anywho, um, crate in Rust. So anyhow, um, basically we, everything, every error gets turned into a result. Um, anyhow, and um, we can add context to um, things that might uh, fail um, and return them. Um, and so this context thing, I think, would be particularly useful. Um, so we can say things about why stuff is potentially gone wrong. Now, one thing I want to do is for the context, um, uh, and we can have a with context that takes a closure. Interesting. Okay. Um, and that would only get run if necessary. So that's a good thing. Um, and I context takes a context C. Um, interesting but it looks like we do have to if we want something interesting we do have to like do a format bang to get there so like we like they do here so if we want to do things that contain <coughs> information um we'll have to do that that way okay we can do that um so let's let's see if we can do anyhow. Um, let's make a branch for that. Add anyhow air handling. <clears throat> and now, oh, we're going to have to um, cargo add anyhow. <clears throat> um, and that seems good. And now we want um, basically anything that, any place where you have unwrap or, oh, there's so gonna be so many places. Hmm, well, let's start with the question marks. Oh, let's like get rid of that. Uh, where are we? Oh, we don't have it. Oh, that's because it's in the test files. Don't care. Don't want just don't want to see you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's go to packet group write file which returns a thing. And is there anything else in packet group that returns a possible error? No. Everything else just quote unquote works. Okay. So here, <coughs> instead of returning an IO result, <coughs> excuse me, getting all froggy all of a sudden. <coughs> We want to return an anyhow result. Um, so, uh, so we want to import an anyhow result. Okay. And then we want this to return a result. 
and that'll still be a unit type because we're not going to return anything if things go well uh, and so we need so everything still officially works is that true um, no because file manager doesn't compile because <clears throat> file manager is returning an IO result. And so we want to change that to be an anyhow result. Okay. And main, we have the same thing. Uh, use anyhow result and then where is main busing right here this needs to be this and now here this is going to be a problem because this is returning um, a uh, packet parse error and we want an anyhow error and so that's going to be a thing that we're going to have to deal with and that's going to be in packets so we need to packet parse error needs to be interpretable as an anyhow error and there is a way of dealing with that. Um, here we go, yeah. So we can bring in this error and we can derive uh, the necessary um, thing for us. So cargo add was it this error wah, wah, wah. and now we should be able to pull that in uh, and then derive error on our packet parse error and if you hear like some weird leaky balloon thing going on, that's our cat uh, who's being very noisy at the moment in my lap. And so we have to have these error things uh, so it knows how to um, uh, print, what to print um, when things happen. Now we can attach bits of information to errors to improve our error messages. We probably should do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, uh, packet didn't have enough bytes. Um, error uh, 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 packet didn't contain data that could be parsed to a string. So now, does that all compile? I think. Maybe. Um, yes, it does. Now there's some warnings now, file manager. We don't have I.O. anymore. That makes sense. And we packet group. We don't import self anymore. And that, I think, cleans all that up. The tests all pass. Um, now, is there a way we can see if this is even happening? Um, how would we force a... Oh, here, I know how we could force a write error. Um, if we... 
Um, create a file. Uh, make sure I get the name right. Java test files. So if we create a file as you like it.txt and we change this so that it's not, nobody can write to it, then when we run this, we should get a fail because it should attempt to write to that file. Oh, of course that'll happen at the very end. That's annoying. Um, but if we're patient, it will get there. Um, but it should then fail to write to the file because it won't have permission to write to the file. Um, and there's really no good way to make that faster um, because it's in the right that we're looking at uh, code that's in the file writing and so we've got to wait till the downloads have happened anyway now we could change this so that it writes when a file is finished okay so we get error permission denied OS error 13 well that is not the most helpful thing in the world like, oh, so we need context. Aha. So I think we need to add context here. If we added context, then we would hopefully get that context printed out and we would be able to know a little more about what was happening. So let's try that. Boom, bop. And then boom dot context uh, and then format bang um, couldn't open file boom boom ba um, self dot file name And now this is probably, oh, oh, this is again an option. Ah! Okay, let's actually let file name be self dot file name dot as ref dot unwrap. Okay. Oh, we needed the unwrap. Okay, so now file name's a string. And now we can put file name here. And then we can say file name here. We don't have to say this over and over again. And why are you grumpy? Uh, we're borrowing a move value. So we must have given this away here. Really? Why did we give you away? Can we? <laughs> so now we would want as ref. There we go. So then we get a reference to a string and then I bet we don't need that reference there because it's a reference anyway yeah now hopefully if we run it we will get an error message that will include information about which file it failed to write to
uh, and that would be good. Now, as I was saying, we could have this write as soon as it determines that a file is done. Um, that could be potentially useful because, I mean, you know, it really doesn't matter because all this is so fast, we'll never see the difference. But if you had a lot going on and a lot of files, having the system start to write a file right away while it's still downloading, because it's waiting on the network, so it could use the time that it's waiting on the network to be right into the file, then everything would go faster. Um, aha! Couldn't open file as you like it, caused by permission denied OS error 13. That's much nicer. That is very cool. Um, okay. And then presumably if we change, um, let's, if we just remove as you like it, did that actually remove? Yeah, it did. And if we chmod a minus right to, I don't know, let's say binary and we run it again. We should get an error that says that binary failed and that as you like it should be okay. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that. I think that was... I think this is the start of a meaningful change because being able to add the context is pretty nice. And this is more lightweight than there was a crate we played with um, I think back in September. Um, yep, couldn't open file binary JPEG caused by blah, blah, blah. That's nice. Um, so let's uh, remove. Uh, that. Get rid of all those guys. Yeah. Um, we looked at another crate that did similar things, but this anyhow seems to be simpler and more straightforward. So I want to uh, commit what we've got. What time is it? It's quarter till. We can do some more. But I'm going to commit this first. Um... Okay, so so let's do these two first. So we added um, added anyhow and this error add dependencies boop um, and now this and main and Actually, that and main. Uh, so let's just do those two for now. So, oh, and I guess we could say that's true for, uh, well, we could add this hunk. And it's really this line. Yeah. So, um, change functions to return anyhow result um, lots of things returned IO result, but we want to return anyhow result. Now instead, that um, affected pretty much everything in the call chain. Boom. Now that's that. Let's do this one. Um, uh, have 
packet parse error derive this error da error. Wow, I cannot type today. And really, I should have probably done back ticks here and here. Um, this derives error. Um, say this error error um, so that it can print uh, error messages and use these uh, use packet parse error instances as anywho anyhow errors uh, yeah okay and then packet group uh, so this is where we finally did something useful um, uh, have packet group uh, write file return an error with context um, uh, sets up uh, let's say adds context with information about the file that we were trying to open if that fails boom boom okay now we can also at presumably add context to this question mark here so this could be uh, context failed to write to we probably want to format bang failed to write um, data to file file name burm, burm, burm. Uh, comma packet boom so I did what I've got a missing a close print so now if we f open the file but we fail to write to it um, then in theory oh and we'll leave the question mark at the end um, in theory that would generate that message i don't know under what circumstance that would fail other than a permissions problem and that i think is being handled by the open the create up here um so I don't know how we would cause that to happen and see it happen. So I think we're going to have to live with that. Um, and so let's see what we got. Uh, so we've done that. Um, write all files. Aha. So packet group, write all files. Um, Do we want something different to happen here? Um, probably not. Because I think we've attached enough context when we actually um, did the packet group write file stuff. I don't know what we would add to 
that here. Like we don't have any knowledge here. We know the packet group num. Well, we don't actually because we're looping over the values. Yeah, I don't think we have anything here to add, so I don't think we will. Um, now main. Aha. This we could do something with. Um, so boom and boom and let's see I guess the context goes after the await dot context um, format bang failed to bind to zero 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 colon seven oh seven seven and in fact we don't really need format there because we're actually I'm gonna leave format in because be in a better world this would like there'd be something here that would be uh settable like from the command line um uh, so we need to import anyhow context. Um, so that would, uh, that would probably fail if I try to start two of these at once. Um, what's going on? Oh, that's the server running. Um, Oh, here we could use this guy down here. So we could say Russ, no cargo run. And then at the same time down here, say cargo run. And that fails because the address is already in use and there's our context message. So we failed to bind to that particular thing. And then we get that that was already in use. Very nice. Okay, I'll kill that. Um, so that's cool, that did a thing. Uh, now connect. Um, so connecting to the socket. So connecting to the socket can fail. Um, doesn't say anything meaningful about why that could fail. But hey, we can. We can add stuff with the best of them. Um, context failed. Uh, format bang, I think. Failed to connect to. Oh, yeah, actually. Um, remote address. Boom. Remote adder. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay. That makes sense. And that should fail if the server's not running. So if we kill the server over here and try to run this here, no, that is not what happened. Uh, what did I, how did I not? We didn't get any context information from either of those. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Connection refused. So we don't get any useful information here. Huh. 
Is that because it's happening somewhere down below? Like maybe this doesn't actually figure out that there's a problem. We don't find out there's a problem until we try to send this down here. I don't know. Let's, um, oops. Uh, context format bang um, failed to send initial uh, connect message. Now, do we get something more useful? No, we get the same thing. Well, that's weird. I'm not sure I understand why that's happening. Huh. Is my await in the wrong place? Should I be doing these this way? I don't think so. I'm not even sure that's going to work, right? Yeah. I, I don't think that's the right answer. So I think you want to wait for the result, and then if it's an error, you want to add context to it. Um, So this await is giving us a result, which is an anyhow result, because that's the only kind of result that we have imported. And so context takes an anyhow result itself and a context and returns a new result. So that really should do the right thing. But we are not getting any kind of message. Hmm. I wonder, let's, we want to do this one anyway. So, um, dot wait dot context format bang and this is going to be um, error receiving data packet UDP packet and that's probably it really doesn't add anything so we may not even want that to be honest with you. I mean, a context that doesn't add any meaningful information is not helpful. Um, uh, oh, hang on. Back up. Let's try putting you here. Um, dot, dot, con dot context. Format bang. Uh, so this is trying to convert. Failed to convert data to packet. And that probably, again, is probably not helpful. I should make a note. Let 
remove this not context since it's not helpful and then repeat that here I think um, and I have no idea that I'm not even gonna bother there and there I think we decided that all the useful information is happening in packet group uh, so I don't know that we've got anything useful to share here so I don't know why this is not giving us oh hey error receiving UDP packet interesting so really we weren't getting an error until we got to here oh so that context was actually helpful because without it we didn't we wouldn't have known where the problem actually happened um interesting hmm Okay, well, that's kind of cool. Um, and so if we restart the server, then this actually works. Okay, so that's cool. Um, let's see, what time is it? Oh, it's after four. So maybe this is a good time to stop. I, I will need to go through and look for all the other question marks but i don't know that you need to watch me do that uh, not sure that that'll be um so i'm actually gonna remove that to do i think that's useful i think this to do probably still means something because we'll presumably have stuff happen and try into that will provide useful information um so i think i'll go ahead and and deal with the rest of these question marks offline. Um, and I think we'll consider this done. I think I'm pretty happy with where this is. And um, I think what I will do is probably say that Saturday afternoon is going to be allocated to doing evolution and computation work in Rust. So we'll do the, the web app that C Films is interested in um, or more interested in on Tuesday and Saturday morning still, and we'll do the web app or the evolution computation work Wednesday night and Saturday afternoon. Um, and so, yeah, I think we'll see how that goes. Um, thank you all very much. Uh, I do appreciate the help and the conversation, and um, I hope you are feeling better soon um see films because that doesn't sound like any fun at all and um get some sleep sleep is good and uh have a have a great weekend and we will talk to you later bye boom, 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 boom.